Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am so excited about this uh, episode. So is Oreo. Oreo is really excited. <laughs> this is the episode all about my spinning adventure. Now, what the heck is my spinning adventure all about? Let me tell you because we are on a roll and I have a lot. This video is probably going to be really long. I have a lot to say. I actually made notes about the things I want to talk to you about. This is not going to be a, a... I'm not teaching you anything in this video. I mean, you might learn something, but I'm not teaching anything. Let me find... There it is. I made notes for this episode because I wanted to remember what I wanted to talk to you about. I want to talk, walk you through the whole process of what I... And not, I'm not going to show you step by step what I do to spin yarn. Um, I'm going to talk to you briefly. I'm going to tell you some terms that maybe you've never heard before, and I'm going to try to explain what everything means. If you have questions, by all means, put them in the description or in the, the comments below. Um, I just started my spinning journey a week ago, so I, I'm i very, very new to the spinning world. I have learned as much information as I can digest at the moment. I've watched a ton of videos on spinning and different techniques and then I went with <clears throat> what I thought would be the easiest for my brain to comprehend. And I tried a couple of things out. Bentley wants to join the party. He's very fascinated with the spinning thing. He, um, he keeps trying to intervene when I'm spinning because he enjoys it very much. So. <laughs> All right, so to get started, what is spinning? What is spinning? It is taking a fluffy product. I am working with wool. You can spin acrylic. You can spin bamboo. You can spin whatever fiber there is on the market that starts off as uh, what I'm calling as fluff, okay? And there's lots of types of fluff. There is, we're not gonna go into that because like I said, I'm not the expert. This is what I'm working with. This is just fluff. This is top combed top combed roving something or another it comes in strips of just fluff this is wool it's fluff it's been combed so all of the hairs the fibers and it's not hair because it's wool uh, all the fibers the hairs we're calling them hairs they all lay in the same direction so it's a little bit easier for a beginner to pull the yarn to get it to twist I'll go into all that um, so what I started with <clears throat> and little man is trying to learn so I I manufactured him a little <laughs> he did this last night and he like melted my heart look at this little man is my my almost 10 year old ADHD child <laughs> is a chopsticks with a box that had a hole in it already I made him a little spindle he was spinning it, he got about yay far, and then he wanted to move on to the knitting machine. At which point, he picked the small knitting machine and some red yarn, because red is his favorite color, and he made himself a scarf. He just cranked it out. I had to do the finishing work, but he's very proud of his little scarf, which is currently up in my bedroom on my stitch. He's very proud of himself. So he spun yarn and he knitted last night. Out of all of the children that I have raised, the boy is the one that is interested in my art. <laughs> Not the three girls I raised. I gotta love that though. I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud of that. So anyway, um, this is what I'm working on currently. This is called a drop spindle. There are different types of drop spindles. There are ones with the hook and the whirl. This is called the whirl on the top. Well, there's other ones where the, the whirl is on the bottom and like you spin it this way. There's ones that are called Turkish spindles, which Laura from Mad Mimi Crochet actually has. And it's like two wood pieces that crisscross with the stick that goes through and it's more of a this style, you spin this way. I'm spinning this way. So well, I'll show you, I'm gonna show you all of that. But this is a drop spindle. I got the whole kit, this, this cute little suitcase filled with, I think it was five different colors of small balls of fluff, which I turned into yarn, which I'm going to show you in more details. I am 
ridiculously proud of this this adventure because I was terrified that I was going to screw everything up and that I was not going to be able to do this. And spinning is not a cheap hobby to get into. I mean, you can get you can get drop spindles for like twelve or fifteen dollars, no problem. The kit that I purchased was forty five dollars on Amazon. I will link it below in case any of you are interested. But like, if you're not, that's cool too. We can just enjoy this video together. So it came with the drop spindle. It came with the little suitcase, which is just it's hat box material, it's cardboard, and it came with this much fluff. So each one of these has two or three puffs <laughs> of wool in it um, and I will show that in greater detail in just a moment so to get started you need to really watch videos and learn how to do this or take a class um, there are classes available at local yarn shops specifically but also creative reuse stores will occasionally have a spinning class um, I have looked in my area and I can't seem to find one and maybe it's just they're not available right now but um, I looked at a lot of videos on YouTube and I connected with Jillian Eve. Jillian Eve is a YouTube, that's her name on, her name is Evie. Uh, Jillian Eve is the channel name on YouTube. I will link her below again. I have watched about a hundred of her videos, I swear. <laughs> I just really like her personality. I relate to her a lot and I like her teaching technique. She's very much like me in the fact that mistakes are okay it's okay if it's not perfect like this is how you can fix things but like let's just do this you know and she's very encouraging and she does she said in a video but it was an old video that she will do one-on-one -on -one, uh zoom meeting tutorials with people um which i thought was cool i didn't know that she did that until yesterday as a matter of fact but I have learned a lot from watching her. But I watched a lot of drop spindle videos to understand the technique and what it takes to turn it into yarn. And I am trying right now. Now let's, let, let me show you what I've created first, okay? So this is the first ball that I created. And I picked the colors of the fluff that came in the suitcase that I didn't like particularly. I'm not a brown fan. I like neons okay i like really bright loud colors <laughs> i like rainbows browns not so much i'm not a neutral kind of person my adhd brain is like mm -mm, we need color or else we're bored and so i picked the browns out of the bucket first because i was like if i hate it it's not gonna break my heart that i use the really pretty color colored yarn you know and so this is what came up from my first time now what you're gonna see is a lot of really fat pieces and a lot of really skinny pieces and there is a huge learning curve because what you're doing when you're spinning you have to attach it here okay and then you have to spin it whoop and then while this is spinning you got to get a good spin on it that's not a good spin hang on you get it going you build up spin in this part of the thing see how it wants to coil on itself and then you have to do something called drafting so you pull a certain thickness and then the twist it's untwisting because I'm not holding it the twist will move up into the yarn okay and you have to be careful to not pull it too thin like I did right here or too thick <laughs> And the hardest part is keeping it even. But if you look at this, which is my first one, and see how fat it is here and how crinkly it is there. And there's parts that are really skinny, like right here. See the difference between this finger and that finger? I went from that thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin to this is very, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's way more even. The thick parts are less thick and the fat parts usually are happening when I have to join because it broke because this yarn falls apart real easily okay so if you pull too hard or too fast it just falls apart and then you have to figure out how to put it back together to spin it again and that has been my biggest um, struggle is is attaching the next yarn without it getting a big chunk fat like that but I also this one is on my my yarn swift but look how even this is 
Come on, focus. Is it focused? There we go. See how much more even this is? This is probably, this is the best one out of the bunch that I've done. It's not perfect, but it is, it's really close. It's really close. All right, so this was the first one I did, and I'm going to unhank it so you can see. This was three different colorways. So this was three puffs, and it's very thick, thin, very thick, thin. And you can see that I started with the darker chestnut color. Let's see if I can line these up. So I started with the darker chestnut color. Then when I was done spinning that, I moved into a lighter hazelnut color. And then I put in the yellow and purple one. And so this is going to be a self-striping yarn just because I used three different colorways and I didn't blend them at all. Um, but very thick, thin, very, in some places, feels like a rope. I'm going to knit this into a hat because I think it's going to be fun. And I got a pretty good amount of yarn. Now, I could have got way more yardage had I spun it thinner. <laughs> Because we know that when you spin something and you have, if you have a 100 gram ball of a chunky yarn or a bulky yarn, it's like 90 yards, right? And then if you have 100 grams of like a fingering weight or a DK weight, you have like 500 yards, right? So this is probably going to be just enough to make a hat. And I may have to add in extra yarn because it might not make a hat. I don't know how many yards this is. I didn't measure it. <laughs> but I'm proud of it because that was my first try. And honestly, for my first time ever spinning, I think it's beautiful. And I'm really, really proud of this. And I'm really proud to turn this into a hat or something. Now, the second time I came up on the spindle, I'm like, all right. This also is a mix of, I think this is two colorways. One was purple and one was blues, I think. I think this is two and I definitely still have the thick thin thing happening but it started to even out a little more and I love the way it barber pole stripes the colors I'm just obsessed <laughs> I'm so obsessed you can't get this from just any old yarn these yarns are 100% unique one of a kind yarn see how the colors just barber pole now from a distance this is just going to be a purple yarn but when you look up close, there's going to be all of the colors. See, and there's the blue section and then the purple section. So again, it's going to start off purple and it's going to move into the blue or vice versa. So this is the very first colorway I spun. And then that's the second one is this lighter blue. Isn't that beautiful? And I have learned so much through these, just playing with it and practicing and thinking about what I'm doing and watching videos and learning things, I'm very much a, I don't just try something. I learn as much information as I can before I go into it. Now, this is the third one I did. This was just, I think this was just one puff ball. And I think it was just a very light rainbow and pinky colorway. And we still have the thick thin thing happening, but with each time, it's getting thinner. See how these giant fat pieces are? So we have a couple of puffs, but for the most part, it's way thinner. This one reminds me of Bamboo Bloom um, from Universal Yarns. This reminds me of it so much. It's not as soft as a Bamboo Bloom, but the thick, thin, the colors, the way it feels, it very much reminds me of the Bamboo Bloom from Universal Yarns which makes me so proud of myself that I was able to recreate something that looks manufactured well, in my mind. I, to you, it may be rubbish, okay? If you've been spinning a long time, this may be ugly to you and you may be like, oh, what did you do? But to me, it's progress and I think it's beautiful and I cannot wait to work these up into something. I very well may just mix a bunch of yarns together and just create something that's funky because that's what I'm known to do. But each time... I'm getting a little bit better. 
Actually, this one might be two colorways because it looks like one side is more pink and one side is more yellow. So this may actually be two. This may actually be two different fluffs. I don't remember. I didn't take notes. But see how I'm getting the much thinner pieces? And it's on a grand scheme of things is more even all the way across. They're still fat and skinny parts. So there's a big fat part right there, but Look at how even that looks. <laughs> it's like all one thickness. It's magic. And I was watching Jillian Eve and she's been doing this a long time. And while mine is not as beautiful and technically perfect as hers, like she was doing something during a video and I was like, okay, my yarn's doing the same thing as her yarn. So maybe I'm not doing it all wrong, right? And that is really giving me... Um, watching other people and looking at their work and looking at how some people purposely do fat skinny in their yarn and they do there's art yarn that you can do like there's so many things you can do with with this type of techniques you could take two yarns and wrap them together so you'll have like these two and twisted together and then it will just be like beautiful marled yarn there's so much you can do with this yarn Obviously, I need to work on making it a lot thinner before I ply them together. That's what's called plying when you put the two and twist them together. Um, but I'm really proud. Now, I'm also speeding up. So this one took me two and a half days to complete this little bit of yarn. This is just shy of that amount. And this took me about two hours last night. So I'm also speeding up a lot with my technique and what I'm doing. And I, it's really pretty. Now last night, not last night, this one, which I'm going to pull off my yarn swift a little bit. This one on my yarn swift, what I was practicing with this technique is I was practicing splitting the yarn to create colored stripes so it wasn't just hodgepodge of colors I was really thinking about what I was spinning and trying to create. especially down here you have the pinks this is more of a green and then the yellows so down on this bottom half I was really color controlling as I spun whereas the top part I was not but I started noticing when I would pull certain colors and it would create different like color looks so because the fluff I'm using is basically a unicorn tail it has yellow blue pink and white in it and if you blend these a certain way when you pull so like this there's there's blue and yellow what happens when you mix blue and yellow it looks more green to your eye and if you mix the pink and the yellow it looks more orangey i mean not quite orangey but it looks slightly more orangey and then i was do, doing the colors that way trying to create pinks purples blues oranges like trying to do that while I was spinning the yarn I was really thinking about it and while the outside of this looks very hodgepodge inside there I was doing the same thing so what I was doing is I took and I split the colors and I threw it on the floor I split the colors and by doing that you just take it was it was twice as thick as this I would just take and I would grab like the pink and the blue. And I would just split it all the way down very carefully to try to separate some of the colors to create the self-striping look. And I think I have done something. <laughs> now, what does it look like when I spin? Because I don't have the perfect technique down but what I do is I've been sitting in a chair where I can cross my legs and I keep all of my fluff on my left side because I'm ambidextrous but I am predominantly I'm ambidextrous but I lean left I lean right-handed with most things some things I lean left-handed so with this I'm doing it right-handed until I learn it and then I will be able to probably do it with both hands so what I do, I'm going to try to back up. All right, what I do is I roll it off my leg like that and I get it going in a good spin and then I do the park and draft method. Now you can put it in your armpit and hold it, 
But what I do is I fold my legs in the chair and I actually stick it either between my feet or I use my foot up against my thigh and I hold it. And it stops it from unspinning. And then I draft it. And drafting means this yarn kind of comes together like a triangle like this. You grab it like right here where the small part of the triangle is and you pull. You pull a certain length and then the twist that you built up down here goes into the yarn. See? Now because I'm doing this on camera, obviously it's coming out thicker than what it should be. And I'm used to parking it down there. <laughs> so you give it a good twirl, you build up the spin, park it between your little legs or between your foot and your thigh or in your armpit if you need to. And then you just pull and let it go pull and let it go and the twist will keep building up the yarn now the hardest part for me is getting a feel for how much twist is enough and how much twist is too much twist but also there is something called staple length okay now staple length is determined by how long the fibers are in your yarn and that varies by type of fiber so it depends on the type of fiber it depends on there's a lot of things that it depends on and i'll show you as soon as i get the twist built up on here i'm gonna fit oh dang and see this is something i do frequently is i accidentally pull too much <laughs> All right. Now when you're done, I go to the bottom and I give it a little twist and then I work it up towards the top. Because if you have too much built up around under here by the whirl, it will fall off. Like the whole thing will fall off. All right, so that's how I've been spinning. I just been doing that. I park it in my legs and I do the drafting until the spinning starts to slow down and it's not as spun. Like I said, this is not a tutorial. This is just telling you what I've been doing. Um, and really learning. So staple length. Let me show you staple length. Because this is all terms you haven't probably haven't heard before. Staple length is how long the fibers are before they fall apart. Okay, So if you grab here and you pull, that's how long the fibers are. Okay, So you don't want to pull past that point or else it's going to just fall apart. So what you need to do, and this comes from learning how to feel the fiber separating, what I do is I pull like this, and I can feel the fibers underneath. I can feel them sliding like that, and I wait until they hit to where they stop sliding underneath my finger, and then I let it twist. Because if you go any further than that, it falls apart which I have done a hundred times and it's fine <laughs> okay so now once I'm done spinning and I have it all wrapped up on here then what I do I let it rest on there for a little bit because my arms hurt because the way I park and draft is I pull from down here and then I pull 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 <laughs> and then I twist it and then I do it all over again and when I spin it I hold it up like this so there's a lot of arm motions that I'm not norm I, I'm not normally using so my arms my chest muscles my back muscles have been getting kind of tight so when I get done I've spun for a couple hours already I will let it set on the the spindle thing and I let it sit there until I'm ready to move on and then when I'm ready to move on I come and put it on my yarn swift. This is an Amish yarn swift. This is the base. It sits on here. You need a lot of table room for this. And then I spin this while holding this in the other hand. And I let this spin in my hand because that's all the tools that I have currently. <laughs> There's other ways that you can go about doing this. But I just spin this and I let it run in my finger and roll off. And I load it on here. And then I let it sit on here for at least a day a good 24 hours just to stretch it out a little bit and this is not a technique that i've learned from any other channel this is just something that i found works for me 
I let it, this is kind of like my version of a Nitty Naughty. A Nitty Naughty is another tool I do not possess and don't plan on buying because it's working on the Swift. It just stretches, it does exactly what I'm doing here, stretches the fibers out and holds them so they're not trying to crinkle back up on themselves. Then after it sits on here for a good day, I take it to the bathroom sink. And I throw it in some warm water, not hot. Hot will shrink your yarn. Warm, like slightly above room temperature. Just slightly warm. I put a little soap in it because my soap smells really good and I like the way it smells. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> this one I didn't soap and you can tell the difference. Gave it a little washy wash. Smells delicious. Um, and I just do this in my bathroom sink. I let it soak in there in the soapy water a little bit. Get any of the dirtness off of it. If it's going to bleed at all, it bleeds. But none of these have bled yet. So, I mean, well, I'm kind of glad about that. Um, this shirt bled, but the yarn I'm spinning is not bleeding at all, which is fantastic. So, I let it sit in there a good 20, 30 minutes, or if I forget, a couple hours. And then I come and I just squeeze all the water out of it. Don't twist and wring it. Just squeeze, right? You can also throw it in... Um, a salad spinner and spin it and it will spin some of the water out and then I thwack it now this is a technical term I learned from Jillian Eve I literally take it on my back deck and I take the yarn and I it's still kind of wet at this point and I just slap it <laughs> just a couple times just smack it and what it does is it kind of like wants the the curls or the the part where it wants to spring back it will get this that out a little bit now there's still some curly cues in there because like i said i'm learning and um after that i hang it to dry and i've learned to hang it to dry because wool no matter what you do when you wash it especially in warm water it's going to want to shrink back up when it dries it does the same thing when you dye it like if you hand dye yarns it shrinks up it just does so what i've been doing is i've been putting a weight in it so i don't know why i wound that back up so while it's still damp i hang it on my doorknob okay and then i put not a heavy weight just a weight i've been using um a, br a brick from scentsy which is the equivalent of five wax melt things and i just prop it in there okay and it's hanging from the doorknob and I put a bowl under it to catch the drips. And when it dries, it has dried, stretched out. And it stays pretty good because the Scentsy Brick has like bumps in it. So it like goes around and over the yarn. And that's the end of it. And then I bring it in here and I hank it up. I haven't caked any of them up yet and I've not tried to use any of them yet. But rest assured when I knit these up into something, because I want to knit them because they're small amounts of yarn and it will go further if I knit it. Also, because these are so thick, I think it will knit up better with a looser fabric than if I tried to crochet it. It will be kind of a dense, stiff fabric. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's how I have created beautiful, beautiful yarn. This one so far is my absolute favorite. This obviously has not been washed yet. It's been on here about 24 hours, so it's ready to go in the wash. And uh, I'm going to be working on spinning the rest of this unicorn tail today. This should only take me a couple more hours to finish. And then this will end up on the Yarn Swift. I did order... I mean, I have more fluff. So when this is done, I have this beautiful stuff that I got from Amazon. This is <clears throat> Living Dreams Yarn fibers sparkle glitz and glam this was an amazon thing i will of course i will uh link this because <laughs> it's gorgeous and then at the advice of chevy rail the revolution fibers bambino which has bamboo in it <coughs> is going to hold off a little bit before i spin this because um she said it's a slippier slippery more slippery fiber i also i don't like i don't think this is going to be very pretty worked up 
because I don't like the way the girl so I'm gonna have to split this into colors because I really think this is looking army green and I don't like army green so I think I'm gonna pull this apart and see if I can blend the colors separate <coughs> to create something like how gorgeous is it? but these are bamboo so these have to wait they're really soft the Chevy rail told me to wait on those and I'm gonna follow her advice because she's way far more talented at this than I am <coughs> she's more experienced I'll say it. she's more experienced she's probably more talented too but I don't want to discredit myself and say that I'm not talented because I'm sure with time I will be talented and I'll be able to consider myself talented with this craft but I've already seen great improvements from one to two to three to four which is on the the thing and the five I, I don't know exactly what's gonna look like till I pull it off but I am seeing that I am in a week have made really big jumps to how great it's looking from the first one to the the fifth one that I've done now and I actually ordered more fiber from Koi Goo because I didn't know Koi you guys know I love Koi Goo okay Koi Goo is a a yarn dyer a yarn they they have the sheep like they have their own sheep they make the wool they make they've i have a ton of their hanks of yarn because i really like their yarn i'm a huge fan of koi goo i have an order coming in today which i will probably show that to you next week i'm not really sure but i ordered some some comb top from them i think it's comb top it's a braid um so that should be coming today. It's due, but UPS, you know how UPS is in this area. Package scheduled for delivery. I literally just got a thing saying it should be here by 7. So that's fantastic. It's 11.30 now. It probably will be here at 8. <laughs> Although UPS usually comes through the neighborhood about 2, 3 o'clock. Hopefully. You, never, you just never know with UPS, man. But, um, so I'm going to have one more of the, the braid to work with. And... I think that one, I don't know if that one's going to be easier to work with or more difficult because I have noticed that when it's blended, comb, so bl blended, what does blended mean? You ever seen the videos where they do the combing and they comb the wool to make it stretch out so they can turn it into whatever they turn it into, right? Okay, so to blend it, to do these, what they do is they lay the yarns next to each other so they'll take the pink next to the purple next to the white and all of the fibers which is why i can split the colors down the middle because the colors are separated now when you dye the roving which i will talk more about that when i get that from koi goo they took just the white fluff the long tail of white fluff and they dyed it like that when that happens sometimes it becomes a little bit felted and the yarn wants to stick on itself because it's been washed and it's been heat treated um, so it will, I don't know if it's going to be easier to, to draft, to pull, and I don't know if it's going to be harder because maybe the fibers are a little more sticky. We're just going to have to wait and see. Um, I have talked to Mr. Cinnamon about maybe buying a spinning wheel for myself. <coughs> In the future. But they're really expensive, and... I don't want to buy one until I know that this is not a hyperfixation. And what is a hyperfixation? People with neurodivergence, ADHD in my case, has, um, they hyperfixate on things. And I've been known to do this. You will really like just fixate on one thing. Um, photography was a hyperfixation for me for a couple years. And now I could care less about photography like I still enjoy it but I don't touch my cameras unless I need to I don't go on photography adventures like I used to I certainly don't work with families anymore doing portrait photography because I'm just so over that but um I kind of felt like I had photography as a hyper fixation for a while I don't know the crochet is a hyper fixation it may be but we've been going for five, six years now, and I'm still, like, enjoying the yarn. <laughs> I love everything about the yarn. And um, I don't know if this is going to be a hyperfixation. Because I weaved for a little bit. I did macro for a little bit. I really enjoyed it, and then I was like, I don't want to do that ever again. Like, 
macrame is cool but like it's hard on your hands like it's really hard on your hands because that yarn is not soft that the, whatever you do the macrame with weaving i liked weaving it was very relaxing for a couple of months and i was like i don't like weaving anymore it's i don't know it doesn't light my brain on fire like some things do this right now i find it really relaxing i'm really enjoying it i can't believe i created yarn from fluff i'm really impressed with myself little man has taken an interest which i may buy him a drop spindle and see if i can teach him how to spin yarn because i think he would enjoy that um he came to me last night and he's all he just kept saying i love you over and over and over to me and i looked at him and i was like i love you too but what's wrong and he's all nothing i was like no why do you keep telling me you love me he's all because i love you mommy and he's not that's not who he is he's a boy <laughs> like he's, he doesn't do that i said no you need to be able to talk to me he's all i am talking to you i was like no i need you to talk to me about your feelings it's okay and he said, I'm just really, really sad and I don't know why. I said, I feel that way too sometimes. He said, well, I don't have anything to do. And I knew exactly what was happening. I, I experienced this. Boredom can lead to really bad thoughts. Um, idle hands and all that. Like, when, when, when your brain is so overactive and you literally have nothing to do, it builds up, for me at least, and I know for him, it builds up anxiety and tension and your bones and like everything will start to like tense up and it is a horrible feeling it is a buildup of energy inside your body and you need to find a way to expel it or it just doesn't feel good and i knew exactly what he was feeling at that moment i was like okay well let's find something for you to do and i was spinning at the time he's all can i do that I already had a whole bunch of yarn on the bobbin. I was like, I can't take that off. So let's see if we can find you a spindle. And so I created this and it didn't work really well because he was spinning it this way. And I don't know how to spin that way because <laughs> I spin this way. So he seemed to enjoy it. And I thought about buying an extra spindle for him, just a cheap one, um, to see if he is interested in learning that. And maybe buy him some some fluff that he can use because he caught on really quick to what he had to do to create i mean obviously it's really thick but so was my first spin <laughs> it's not pulling apart so he did something right and he's really proud of that he wanted he actually wanted me to show you guys but i'm really careful with what i put on the internet because i noticed people were saving videos of him on tiktok and there's a lot of creep balls on tiktok and so i i'm really careful with what i show so i have a photo of him sitting on the couch concentrating very hard on trying to get the yarn to spin um this is him spinning and wrapping and then this is when we moved over to he's kind of blurry in that picture he moved over to the the low cranking machine and this is him finishing <laughs> this is him finishing his low project he gets very loud so i'm gonna leave the sound off he actually screams at them he's very excited his aim was 150 rows because he's a small child it worked for a scarf 150 rows maybe his little arm muscles go in <laughs> that's a proud mommy right here he was waiting and he was waiting he was like all right it's it's getting down to the thing we're done he was so excited and like i said he got very excited that he was done and then he asked me to do the finishing work and it's just a small real thin red scarf that he created and it got him out of the sadness and the funk and the i'm ready to cry mommy i love you like help me and that's what that's what I took the I love you's as is he was asking for help and he didn't know how to ask for help. I will give you something to do, child. Like let's do something. Like let's get rid of these yucky feelings. Um if you don't know, he's been having a really hard time with a bully at school. And I am at my wit's end with the school. So whatever I can do to make his life happier or easier, I am gonna do that. Um but yeah i think i might buy him a drop spindle today 
I think he will enjoy learning. And even if he doesn't like draw, if he doesn't like spinning, if he does, if it doesn't catch on because his ADHD is way worse than mine, if it bores him and he just can't, I will have a spare spindle in case I break this one because I have dropped it. <laughs> when I was learning, I spun it on my leg and I shot it across the deck. But I'm going to end this video because my battery is about to die. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you found this interesting. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.